Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by The Mosaic Company. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soil School. Today I am down on the shores of Lake Erie at Sandy Shore Farms and I'm catching up with Bill Unger. He is the farm and agronomy manager. Bill, thanks for taking the time. Thanks for the invite. And thank you for coming out to see what we do here at Sandy Shore Farms. Yeah, I mean, a great story here. We've got soil health, we've got organic matter, we've got the four R's, we've got profitability. Um, I want to get to all of that, but hey, first of all, Give us a snapshot of the operation. Tell us about the farm and, and what's all involved. Okay. Well, Sandy Shore Farms is uh, family owned. Uh, we are over a thousand acres of crop. We are the largest asparagus grower in the province of Ontario. Uh, we have a couple, close to a couple hundred acres of uh, peppers and uh, just under a hundred acres of onions this year. But we also have several different uh, cover crops. Mm -hmm. Um, we grow millet as well for a cover crop. We grow alfalfa to help with soil health. Um, yeah, that's, mm. that's basically about it. I want to talk more about these cover crops, but first of all, I want to talk about the soil. You got a lot of sand. We have sand, a lot of sand. We are on the edge of the Norfolk Plains. Mm. Um, the soil has a tendency to move to the next farm or the farm down the road if the wind picks up too high. Yeah. And what's the organic matter level? The organic matter level on most of the farms here is less than 2%. Yeah. I want to talk about how you manage that with cover crops in a second, but first give me your rotation. Obviously we've got peppers in here, we've got asparagus yes. right here. Um, take us through the rotation. Uh, well, uh, in our crop rotation we have a tendency to rotate from crop to crop as everyone is, well not everyone might be aware, but asparagus is a long-term crop, anywhere from eight to 20 to 25 years mm. in the ground before it's removed and we go. Um, we rotate our, from peppers to millet or to alfalfa, and then our onions will go from, uh, will more than likely go into a millet field that we planted the previous year. Um, and then after the onions, they'll get a, fall, they'll get a cover crop uh, come the fall time, uh, same with the peppers, they'll get a cover crop and then um, we'll, that's basically it for our rotation. Mm. Tell me about the cover crop mix and you, you make the point that every acre sees a yeah. cover crop. Every acre sees a cover crop. Um, we're standing in an asparagus field right now that actually has tillage radish as mm. the cover crop. Mm. Um, otherwise we're using a lot of rye. Uh, we're going to be using some oats. We're using millet, and of course, people don't believe it, but alfalfa is, for us, a cover crop, but it's also a crop. Yeah, exactly. Hey, tell me about um, vegetable production and cover crops. I mean, we're a, a lot of grain producers are always trying to figure out where to fit cover crops in. You swear by them, and it is, you know, it from an organic matter perspective, a soil health perspective, and a profitability perspective. Yes, okay. Well, with us and our vegetable crops that we grow here at Sandy Shore Farms, we see the benefit uh, several fold. Um, we're trying to increase our organic matter, which is very difficult in any soil type, whether it's sand or clay or clay loam. But adding that cover crop has a tendency uh, to keep the soil in place, keep something green and living until the fall, until winter freeze up, which helps then to come springtime when things start to break down and decay that we get release of nutrients. Yeah, and you, you, you talk about those soil mo microbes yes. and the activity you get in that soil, and obviously, you know, its ability to break down um, and contribute to yield. Yes, and you know, for example, here we're standing again, like we said, we're in an asparagus field that's underseeded to tillage radish. We won't see the exact benefits of the tillage radish probably till 2024 here on this field as this crop does not survive the winter time but it starts to break down and release its nutrients helps to break up any hard pans and yes there are hard pans in sand that are created from constant traffic and it just helps to increase microbial health from the first experiment that the farm did five or six years ago where they planted tillage radish 
Um, they saw exponentially uh, microbial increase in, in, plant, in soil health um, a few years after the fact. Bill, let's finish this up talking about nutrients, fertility. Um, you're a big proponent of four-hour management. Um, talk about how you uh, manage nutrients on the farm. Obviously, you do a lot of irrigation and fertigation. Yes, we do. Um, on the asparagus, for example, this asparagus field would have had fertilizer spread on it three to five times through the growing season. Mm -hmm. And again, trying to apply the right product at the right time in the right amount. Um, on our peppers and on our onions, we are using uh, trickle tape or drip tape and we're fertigating. Ah. So uh, this way I can control the nutrient levels that I'm placing into the irrigation water that is feeding the plants throughout the growing season. Um, here we are, we're, you know, August the 8th or thereabouts, um, and we've actually been irrigating and or fertigating now for eight weeks. Right. And we're still maintaining, even though we've gotten some decent rainfalls in the last week and a half or two weeks, um, because the peppers are, for example, are under biodegradable plastic with the drip tape in between and we're running twin rows, um, we have to constantly keep watering it because it gets too dry. Mm. Even though the in between the rows will be extremely damp in the row itself, yeah. it can be bone dry. Mm. Final question for you, Sandy Short, are you, are you happy with where you are from a soil perspective? I mean, we talked about it cover crops, managing that organic matter. You're, you know, you're targeting your nutrients. Um, this whole farm approach from an organic matter, a soil health perspective, are you hitting the sweet spot? No, we're not hitting the sweet spot yet. No. It's always going to be a challenge, but we are trying to work our way to get our soil health a lot better than what it is. Mm -hmm. And that'll take time. It always takes time to build that and to maintain that and to try to keep a healthy soil, a healthy crop, a healthy yield, and a healthy return on investment. Awesome. Yeah, it comes down to that for sure. Bill, great to have you on the Soil School today, sir. Thank you for taking the time. Well, and I appreciate the opportunity, and thank you, Bernard. It was a pleasure. Awesome.